Oh, hey, what's up? So it's finally time to talk about part two of the Wagoneer. But this time, we took a little trip to the studio, freshen up that jingle. So let's rock. Started the work, it took longer than I'd expect. It's called a wagon near a store project. Part two of three. I'm pretty sure. Alright, so let's get into it. Part two of the Jeep. We got the engine running smooth, the AC was ice cold. I got some super shiny insulation for the engine. I mean, this is some next level shiny stuff right here. You got light bouncing off of this, and then down onto that, and then pew, off of that crease and back down. It just starts bouncing, it gets trapped sometimes. That light just gets trapped. And eventually, when it comes out, it's so powerful. I mean, you need sunglasses, man. So after we got the Jeep back from Ace Automotive, we brought it back into the shop and had a look over. And just like before, the paint was faded, there were areas that were rusted, it needed a lot of body work, and I knew all that molding was going to have to come up along with the vinyl wood grain sticker, and I just wasn't sure if there was a place where you could buy all that stuff. So I scoured the internet, and this is what I found. The best resource for restoring a Jeep that I'm aware of is Team Grand Wagoneer. They've got a huge selection of stuff. You can find pretty much everything you need for the exterior of the car on Team Grand Wagoneer. There's also Wagoneer World. They're sort of like Wagon Master. They restore and sell their own Jeeps, but they also have a few parts for sale. I got the original corduroy cloth inserts for my seats from them, and they were great to deal with. And I got a few pieces from J&W Auto Wreckers. And I'll put links to all that stuff in the description. But by far the most helpful place was Team Grand Wagoneer. And they also have all the little things you need like screw kits or things you don't think about. The brackets to screw on the luggage rack to water seal the roof of the car. They were the only people that I found that sold the vinyl and the wood grain all together as one kit. Everything is expensive, but that's the nature of restoring vehicles. I learned that restoring vehicles is a marathon is definitely not a sprint. I had to learn patience the first time I tried to restore a vehicle, which was my 1967 BMW R50-2. That thing was an incredible bike. And I spent about two or three years with it, and then when we had Henry, my wife told me I had to sell it, and I couldn't have another motorcycle until the last kid was 18 years old and out of the house. So I got a little ways to go. I actually already had the next motorcycle picked out. It's the BMW R9T Scrambler. That thing is sick! I may just have to get it. Please don't tell. I actually went to Sturgis, Mississippi with that bike and met Vesh over at Benchmark Works and got to see his little BMW motorcycle museum. It's awesome. If you hadn't been down there or if you're into those old BMW bikes, I highly recommend a trip over there. It's worth it. So I ordered the molding and vinyl complete set along with a whole bunch of other stuff. And it took a little while, but eventually everything I ordered came in. That's an important lesson I learned is you have to have patience when you want to restore a vehicle. So to get all this exterior work done, I called my good buddy, the artist, and we came up with a plan. So step one in getting it all done was to take off all the old molding and all that stripping. It sounds pretty easy, but it actually wasn't. We had to get this piano wire on handles to kind of catch it behind the molding and pull it off. I mean, that stuff was stuck on there. The original molding was attached with rivets, so you have to drill those out and then get behind it with the piano wire and pull off all the molding. That vinyl wood grain was even harder to get off it wouldn't peel or scrape. So Shane got a rubber wheel on a rotating air tool and we had to rub every square inch of that vinyl wood grain off. Once the molding and vinyl was off, it was time to do some body work and pull out some dents. Shane showed me this sweet tool, it's called the stud gun and puller. It's like a little welding machine that welds a stud into the center of the dent and then the puller grabs the rod and, and then taps out the dent. And then just a little bit of bondo and sanding and the Jeep was ready for paint. I wanted to go with the original blue, but we took it from that dull and dingy to that sleek and shiny. And that thing looked super clean when it came out of the paint booth. So we let the paint dry for about 48 hours, and then we got the vinyl stickers and slapped them up on the side.
and then we put up the peel and stick molding. The molding comes with some double-sided 3M tape that you just peel the backing off and set in place. So then the exterior was done. We brought the Jeep back to the shop and here it is. So now it's time to put the interior back together. If you want to see some of the sneak peeks of the progress we're making on the Jeep, check out my Instagram feed. I tend to post some of the stuff I'm working on in there. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the Wagoneer Project. The one thing I couldn't find is anyone that remakes a headliner for these Jeeps. It would be awesome if someone got into remaking these headliners because most of them are pretty banged up.